Tool handles. Unsurprisingly, really nice tools come with really nice handles. Some come with nothing at all. Some are so ratchet they can only be used in the bottom of a brown paper bag. They come in many different styles like this socket, which makes sharpening easier. Well, friction holds it secure while in use. I've made a couple of half-assed attempts at this before, but nothing compared to the possibility. Like my buddy Ryan, Scanwoods on Instagram, who updated his entire kit with this beautiful curly ash. There's a problem though. I don't have a lathe, but I bought some nicely machined ferrules, the little brass parts, for this burnishing rod and I thought I'd take another crack at it. Now these ferrules, like the cat, but not, these ferrules keep the leverage from tool use from cracking the wood. These are beautifully machined and made specifically for this tool. More generic options are plentiful and available online. I'll link some in the description. With those measurements, we're ready to make some superfluous shop accessories. To some, I'm sure this seems ridiculous. Tools are functional. They don't need to look nice. To that, I say get off my channel right now. We're not gonna get along. Nah, I'm just kidding. I get it. If I was doing this as a hobby or not working with these tools every day, this probably would be a priority. But I'm all about appreciating the machining and craftsmanship that goes into the tools that make making furniture possible. Given this frequency of use and in contradiction to moms everywhere, I'm happy to report that tool handling has not had any appreciable difference on my eyesight. All right, the first pass on the panel router left this little nubbin intentionally a little bit large, but the taper templates allow for some fine adjustment and I can easily sneak up on the fit. Making both handles out of the same piece of stock with this double-ended approach. This is great for a couple of reasons. One, it makes the piece not so small and easier to handle. It'll also make them the same on either side. Most of the challenge of this project was that handles are typically made on a lathe. I do not have a lathe. I'd like a lathe, but I've heard they're sort of the crack of woodworking. It's too much instant gratification. Once you go lathe, you never go back. But honestly, I kind of enjoy figuring out other ways to solve problems. I want this to be a tight fit, and as you can see, it's gonna be pretty snug. And I think to help it in, we need to take a little chamfer. Somebody once told me a good tip that for small stuff, take the workpiece to the tool. Don't take the tool to the workpiece. That didn't really make sense at the time, but the more experience I get working on smaller pieces, the more I'm getting a feel for that. Tailvice does a great job at pressing the ferrule onto that nubbin. Toy like a toy again. Yeah. Now I can go ahead and shape the handle. This plane, the smallest of my planes, is sharpened at a 45 degree bevel. This high angle means it's harder to push through the wood, but the angle of attack means that there is far less likelihood for tear out. In contrast, this 102, a slightly larger block plane, is honed at a 28 degree bevel. The lower angle of attack makes it much easier to push through the wood, and this is evident even in the way it sounds. As I work around the piece, I pay careful attention to the grain direction. Working with those little fibers as they rise up to the surface produces a silky smooth surface. Working against that grain will tear out chunks, leaving a rough surface. On a piece this small, even a little tear out means starting over. Now with every video, I try to wait until I've provided some good tips, or at least a little entertainment before I ask for your subscription. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far and want to stay up to date on all the cool projects I've got cooking, literally, I really would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And thank you, it really means a lot. I want to give a big shout out to all of you. I just rolled over 100,000 and I literally couldn't do it without you. Thanks so much for watching and supporting along the way. A few people have reminded me, don't worry I didn't forget, I once promised a tool chest at 100,000 and I'm actually working on an entire video course for that. Big things coming in 2023 and I'm excited to do it all thanks to you guys. When beveling an edge, I like to rest one edge of the plane against the table. The second reference point makes for a steady reproduction 
of the bevel angle. In review, I probably should have pulled the ferrules off before shaping the handles. As I got down closer to the final diameter, I definitely nicked the ferrules a few times. <laughs> nicked. That's me. Anyway, not a big deal since they're brass, but it's a repair that didn't have to happen. I got to thinking, I'm not actually sure why all tool handles are round. Doesn't having some facets make some sense to not have all of your tools rolling off the workbench onto the floor? Who made these standards anyways? Rules are made to be broken. Like most of them, some of them. The dumb ones anyway. And now that I have reached the roughly octagonal final shape, it, I can go ahead and part the two handles from one another. To do this, I'm using a carcass saw, specially filed to cut across the grain cleanly. I'll do my best to make the two cuts meet in the center and we'll just go ahead and clean up the ends later. I get a lot of great comments. I get a lot of complaints as well, namely about music and speed. Music, I get it, music's pretty personal. And some of my larger projects that take over six months, it's hard to show those in real time. Go figure. So I hope you're enjoying this David Attenborough does woodworking kind of vibe I got going here. Sorry my accent isn't as cool. Now I go ahead and slip the burnisher into one side. Maybe this is a one-sided handle tool. That feels all right. Well, I got two, might as well try them. Uh-oh. Wait, did that not fit before? Oh, that's a little tight. Nothing brute force can't fix. Huh? Well, maybe not. Turns out there's a little schmutz in there. Uh, there it is. And there we have it. As promised, one pair of superfluous walnut accessories. I might even not finish it and leave the ends rough. I don't know, some little brass caps might be cool. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate if you considered subscribing. Catch you on the next one. Peace.